Now, Tyler, it's time for Aki's A List from the mind of the man who understands the four P's of Waddle's world. Aki's A List. The top questions and topics floating around in Tyler Aki's mind. Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Aki's A List on ESPN Chicago. And Aki's A List is brought to you by Circa Sports Illinois. Bet like the pros with the largest, the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Sports betting the way it should be. Tyler. All right, gentlemen. There was a, an article in The Ringer the other day talking about the NFL's worst to first candidates. And we all know it happens quite, quite frequently, including 19 of the last 21 seasons when this has occurred. Now, they went in order from eight to one of the eight last place teams and ranked them on who is most likely to win their respective division this year. And of course the bears find themselves in that conversation. Any guess as to where the bears landed on this power rankings list? I'm going to guess that the Cincinnati Bengals were considered the team most likely to go from last to or to first. Am I right? You are correct. Yeah. They are. I, I probably put the bears right behind them. So the bears were not right behind. Okay. Them. Let me guess. Hold on. Hold on. So it's not, not going to be the New England Patriots because they suck. No chance. They are eighth. The Tennessee Titans, I would not expect them to get ahead of the Texans. I would not expect the Chargers to beat the Chiefs. The Commanders over the Cowboys, no thank you. Ooh. Carolina over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Would I be think the you name. dismissed your former teammate too easily. Really? So the Chargers over I don't know. the I, Chiefs? I could be wrong, but like I think the Jim Harbaugh bump and Justin Herbert is real. The problem with the Bears, I guess, is the division, obviously. It's a tough division. Yeah. So look, look, I, look, I look, look for the see. weakest division. Let me see the weakest division here. Command, um, commanders, I could see a scenario where they – I mean, it's not likely, but I could see why you might like Jaden Daniels. You've got Dan Quinn. The Cowboys could be a disaster. And the Eagles were bad at the end of the year last year. Um, it, it can't be the Chargers. Uh, Can I? Is is the, the Panthers suck? But yes. they're in the worst division. So it is the Panthers at number two. Oh, wow! And it's honestly, it's something that I've looked into a little bit more. It's not a bad bet at eleven to one. Like the Carolina Panthers, I don't think people really understand how much they did in the off season. Because of everyone was just clowning them for the the trade that they made with the Bears, and that's pretty much the only thing people took away from their offseason. They completely overhauled the offensive line. They added Deontay Johnson. They made a couple of nice draft picks, including in their receiver and running back room. Mm. They could take the leap in a terrible division. Well, first of all, I think Atlanta's going to win that division. I think Atlanta's going to. They're the favorite. I, I see, I, yeah, I disagree with can, that poll. Can I tell you, yes, this happened yesterday. I was thinking in my head, could the Panthers be picking first overall next year? Yeah. Because which means then the Bears would be picking 33rd. And, exactly. Yeah. And in addition to that, if that were the case, and this the reason I was thinking about it was watching the Colorado Buffaloes, would they move off of Bryce Young and consider drafting Shadir, Shadir Sanders? That's what was running through my my mind when yesterday. you went to bed. <laughs> I, I don't oh, like that pick. Carolina, I don't like that. I don't they like also it. traded away Brian Burns. I, I would, yeah, I don't like it either. I would take I the Bears ahead that. of them. Where are the Bears? Are they more? Bears are third? Okay, they're third. I would take the Bears ahead of Carolina for I, that. I the only reason I wouldn't is because of the division, the strength of right. the yeah, division. Of Remember, you of have course. to win the division. Right. I know. I, I, get, I get your fear. Fear they of were the two and fifteen, and we're disaster. I get what you're saying, Tyler. But a lot has to come together, and it, uh, you're right. I mean, it happens. But well, does that, it happen to this? two and fifteen okay, teams? Let me talk it. Let me talk Seven you through this. Happened teams. to the the um. Oh, Texans. don't give me proof. Let me talk you talk you through oh, this. True. Okay, let's say that the Packers win ten games. Let's say that the Lions take one step back and they go right. eleven and six instead of twelve and five. Could the Bears find themselves also at eleven and six and they win via the tiebreaker? Like you could talk me into that. Can I tell you too the the Chargers? I'm telling you. They've got the last place schedule. The Chiefs have the first place schedule. The Chiefs have some pretty rough out, you know, out of division games, including opening against the Ravens in the Thursday night NFL opener. 
and and, 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 and once in a while the Chiefs do the, like kind of cruise well, through the, the last regular year, season. That's the, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Last year they only the Chiefs. They were eleven and six. So ex- nothing special. well, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. listen, it. If Could Jim Harbaugh, Harbaugh go eleven and six? Yes. The, the the Raiders and the Broncos are by no means teams yeah. you're fearful of. Right. So if the Chargers make hay against the rest of the league, if Jim Harbaugh changes that I around, agree with you. Justin I agree Herbert with you. and Waddle, they've still got Khalil Mack. I know Joey Bosa's got the in the uh broke his hand the broken right? hand injury. So that obviously is not ideal. And but is injured every year. There's too. nothing to say Kansas City has to win the division. By the way, who's yeah, who, they'll make the playoffs? Who's they don't Justin have to Herbert win the division. Throw into well, that's, this year. The, that's the issue. Is Who's he, he throwing? Ser- that well, Josh, receiver room was completely. I mean, they're gonna perched. run the hell out of it. And Josh Palmer is solid. They drafted Lad McConkey, who will probably be their leading receiver. They like his ability to get open. I'm not, you know, it's not Quentin ideal. Quentin Johnson but was their first round pick last he year. Sucks. And he's been a disaster. He sucks. But listen, Jim Harbaugh knows how to win football games. I'm with you. I like listen. This my favorite player in the league right now is is Patrick Mahomes and my favorite coach in the league right now other than coach Eberflus is Jim Harbaugh obviously so like it's a tough decision for me i just could i could just could say never, i could never bet against Patrick Mahomes could, if it was next year but here's the thing too maybe they Jim's get a second year. maybe the chiefs get just a little fat and happy because they've won a couple of super bowls in a row again not saying they won't make the playoffs just saying they could maybe take their eye off the ball just a little bit, just enough. I but mean, Jeff, you know, like they, they, they added Xavier worthy, which is going to give them the, the, yeah, the you know, Tyree kill type of uh, Chris Jones is in the fold. Like their You're, defense lost uh, Legereus Sneed, but I don't know, man. I, I, I wouldn't, I would never bet against the Kansas city chiefs at this point. I really do think it's going to be a little rough for Jim Harbaugh in year one. All I'm saying is, listen, I'm not saying the Chargers will do it. I'm just saying I see the path where they could. Okay. I I don't see it for Carolina. But you're right. The division's bad, and that's the only case to be made for it. So, But the Bears are third. That makes sense, at least. I mean, they, they need to be in the top two or three. It'd be different if Caleb was going to a traditional worst team in the league situation. Are you surprised that the Carolina Panthers are second on that list, though? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. they should be. They should Where be. Where are the Chargers? The Chargers are fourth, fourth, right okay. behind the Bears. All right, and then, and then, you have and then the, Tennessee fifth. Uh, I no. think the Cardinals were fifth. Uh, yeah. Cardinals, yeah, Cardinals well, fifth. Got, yeah, the hell of a Titans division. Sixth. Yeah, I would have put Tennessee fifth, just because of the division. That division might be pretty good. The the AFC South. It all a lot of it depends on how Richardson, you know, Anthony Richardson yeah. plays this year because they've got a good. I think they've got a good offensive minded coach. And even even Trevor even Lawrence last, Lawrence didn't have a great year. They went did to he? Po- didn't they go to postseason last year? And they they the, just missed out they on the just final missed game of the on season. the final game of the year. But like they're back up, every time. It doesn't matter because like Shane Steichen made Gardner Minshew and, and like helped him put them in position to get to the playoffs last year. If Trevor True. Lawrence bounces back. Like, that division could be really, really good. I mean, didn't Jacksonville wholly underachieve in that division? They but did. They, they collapsed. They collapsed. Stretched. Yeah, they really did. I don't know what to think of Doug Peterson. I know we won a Super Bowl. Right. Am I wrong for thinking, like, having that feeling? No, like, because I remember, as they were winning the Super Bowl, there was lots of criticism surrounding them. Yeah. And then... And then he takes over for Urban Meyer... And I don't think that Trevor Lawrence has taken the the steps or made the strides that I expected him to. Here, here's a question: They have been better than when they were, Urban was there. That's take, for sure. oh no question. Take yeah. the fact that Trevor Lawrence got his boatload of money out of the picture. If you're a Jaguars fan, do you think they are satisfied with Trevor Lawrence given ev- everything that they were promised? No, he was the first pick of the draft. He was talked about in the same way yes. Caleb was. Yes. Oh yeah, one of the best college quarterbacks to come out. He was he really was labeled a can't was, miss, right? Wasn't yeah. he oh, yeah. labeled a can't mm-hmm. cl- uh, miss? But uh, and, you know, well, this, goes, this goes back to your conversation you had with Sylvia about the floor. You know, like Trevor Lawrence's floor is still darn good, but the ceiling he he hasn't reached the ceiling that everyone. And thought. sometimes it's it takes one year, a while. though, guys. Yeah. That one year later, again, this is where. Um, uh, your trajectory is not always linear, linear, right? Like you can't, it's not a straight shot up. Sometimes the Jaguars last uh, before, prior to last season, they were being beat by the chiefs in the playoffs after a huge comeback win against the chargers. And everybody was like, this is it. They're about to take off. 
And then last season, things don't go as planned. I think Trevor Lawrence was hurt for a lot he, of last he was. year, wasn't he? Yeah. He took a big hit early in the season. Exactly. And he it played, was not the same. And the pro not problem, but he played through it the entire year. But Jeff, I disagree a little bit with you. Because yeah. Theo Epstein used to say progress isn't linear all the time. And when it when it, it really does apply to baseball. I don't know. Quarterbacks, I think it should be one step forward each year, if not more. Like who? If you're great, you don't go two steps forward, one step back. Well, I, which no, is what I happened think to it's the know, injury. Fields and Trubisky and well, everyone else. And at, to Meller's point too, remember uh, two years ago now when Justin Herbert got cracked in the ribs. I think it was against the Chiefs or maybe it was the Raiders. I can't remember the exact game. It was a primetime game. And that kind of took him out for a little bit. It took yeah. him a little bit of a while to get back into the swing of things. And you never know back. just how injured a player is, and especially well, at the quarterback. Position. And when they continue to play through it, yeah. it's really hard to know how much that limits them. That's why I think that the injury to the, the Trevor Lawrence story is an interesting one. And if he stays healthy this year and puts up a season like he did last year, then the, the questions are going to become louder. Right. But if he plays like he did two years ago when he threw 25 touchdown passes and eight interceptions in his second year in the league, then I think people are going to suggest, hey, he's back on track to becoming a difference-making quarterback. Yeah, I, I think if he puts up a year like he did last year, it's not like he loses his starting gig. But I think perception changes. And, the, and, the, and, the, and how they deal and build their team might change well especially Thinking, after giving him 270 million well, as i'm saying like we he, we need to give him more he's not the guy we thought he's still decent he's still a starter even if he puts up the same year but it may not be a guy that's special and well, they, if, they if he doesn't make progress in 2024 you can bet doug peterson's probably going to be jettisoned again yeah so mm -hmm. all right tyler what's next all right, we have focused so much That's a on good fo solid football talk. Yeah. That was that was it. Really was. Um, so we focused a lot on the quarterback, the rookie quarterback, and I feel like Roma Dunze, even though he's been mentioned, is sort of forgotten about. He is a top ten pick. He is probably the most forgotten top ten pick. Maybe Michael Penix um, among anyone that was drafted inside that that threshold this season. But Roma Dunze and his expectations for this year. I'm going to give you some of the Bears rookie wide receiver records. Now, this is just wide receiver. This is not running back or tight end who have done a lot of the pass catching in the past and have a lot of the receiving records overall for the Chicago Bears, but just wide receiver. And if you think that Roma Dunze will eclipse these numbers, all right? So we'll start with receptions. The wide receiver leader is Darnell Mooney with 61 receptions as a rookie. Do you expect Roma Dunze to go over that number? 61 receptions. Boy, that's that's a good number. Um, go ahead, Jess. Make a guess. Oh, I'm yeah, looking I'm, for a I'm stat. Going, I'm going over. I'm going over. Not a lot. I'm, I'm going over. I think he gets to 70. Uh, no more than that, though. Um, give me one second. I just want to, I want to look at a comp. And I'll explain it to you in a second. Uh, I Doug, think I Doug, know which comp you're going. Doug, question: When Mooney, who am I going when for? Mooney said Is it, it Jackson Smith yes, and Jigba, yes. Mm -hmm. when Shane six, Waldron 60, offense, sixty-three receptions, along with Tyler Lockett, who had seventy-nine, and DK Metcalf had sixty-six. So I'll go. Um, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over that number because I think he and Caleb will develop a little bit of something, something. And I also think that there's a good chance, based on history that Keenan Allen will miss a few games. And here's a dumb question um, because my mind is always scrambled. When Mooney set that record, were they still playing 16 games? Uh, 2020. So that was the first year yes. of 17. Oh, yeah. 17. Okay. Mm, was it? Because okay. if it was, was 16. The first was, year of 17 or the last year of 16? I thought it was last year of 16. Do you, then, you mentioned then, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Then it wasn't that bad of a question. Yeah. And I take the over. Do you remember how he responded when he was asked what yeah. he thought the Bears were getting with uh, with Shane Waldron as their OC, this was his response. Um, uh, oh. this, is, this is live. That was to the <laughs> CHGO guys. Remember at the Super Bowl. I had never heard. He, and again, I wasn't following the Seahawks closely, but I had never heard that there was an issue be, an issue between them. Uh, good luck to y'all. <laughs> Wasn't there something, though, like DK Metcalf also didn't love him? So Shane Waldron runs a lot of 12 personnel. And well, I know maybe that's what it was. JSN, JSN as the third wide receiver of that trio, was, was not always out on the field and was not, I think, in love with that. 
It's fair. But that reflects perfectly on what Rome, how often is Roma Dunze going to be out on the field? That's the question. I saw them run a lot of 11 personnel in the preseason. I don't know how that will change. but And again, I think that there will be moments where Keenan will get either get a breather or, or may not be available. And I think in those moments, Roma Dunze will flourish. Well, just don't forget, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So Amen. if they don't like Waldron up there, maybe we will down here. All right, yards here. Willie Galt holds the wide receiver record with 836 yards as a rookie wide receiver. I don't. I will go under there. Um. Yeah, I'll probably go under as well. So lots of catches, maybe not as many yards, kind of thing. I DJ think it's more likely DJ is going to have the most yardage. I think yeah. Keenan Allen probably the second most, and then what if I tell you Rome. that Keenan Allen plays? 14 games and Rome plays all 17. Well, Keenan Allen only played what 15 last year, 14 had a, had a career 1100 year. yards, something like that. Um, but he also didn't have a DJ Moore also eating into true. his target share. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna spread the ball around as well. I mean, Swift's yeah. gonna get some catches, Cole Komet will get catches, Gerald Everett will get catches. I think just I, I think that 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 yardage total is a little high for me. I'd go under, I'm all going right. under as well. All what right. does the fantasy football expert say? For Rome? Yeah. Yeah, for 836 yards, will he break that rookie wide receiver record held by Willie Galt? Yeah, I don't think so. I just think Keenan Allen and DJ Moore will take too many yards. I think he'll be in the neighborhood of like 700. So he's he's going to need an injury to one of the starting wide receivers to eclipse that number. And then touchdowns. The number is eight, also held by Willie Galt. I'm going under there I'd as well. I'd go under there, yeah. too. There's just too many options. He's a rookie. Um, but I think what we've seen is, is he's going to be, you know, he's going to be a really good red zone target. You he's think their so? biggest receiver. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm envisioning a season where he goes for like 50 to 55 catches, like 700 to 750 yards, six touchdowns, six touch. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. He's the third option there, or maybe even fourth, if you count Komet, but could he end up being the guy that's forgotten? by the defense or like not as much attention is drawn that way. And he's just going to be open more often. There's no question because eight, eight's a lot though. Eight's eight a lot. Is a lot. Yeah. But it could be one of those eight years is enough <laughs> where maybe he doesn't have a lot of yards or catches, but he has a lot of touchdowns. Hmm. I don't know. I feel the opposite. Almost. I feel like he's going to be great between the twenties and, and not be featured in the red zone. As I, much. I think he's going to be, be wrong. I think he's going to be their number two receiver next year, this year that, yeah. That his title is still key. I agree. Maybe 70 was too many catches for me. You well, know, that's what I said earlier. Maybe that's a little bit too high. But. One thing I'll say, though, I truly think blessing in disguise, him being out of the end zone on that preseason game at Soldier Field where they did not paint the lines. Yeah. I don't think he, I think he is going to be so in tune going forward and going forward, the line will be solid and painted white during the regular season. I do not think he'll make that mistake in the regular season. Well, it's just, yeah, I mean, it, I unless he has a tendency of doing it in college, no, it's just a one-time thing, right? I, but I think it's one of those things where attention to detail, making that mistake in the preseason will actually help him be more aware in the well, regular that's season. That's the whole goal when you play the preseason, to take your weaknesses yeah, and strengthen I, I them up. That, I don't think that's a mistake that yeah. will be repeated. No. I, I agree with you. There. Yeah, I would. To be honest, I think that's more on Soldier Field than it is on Roma Dunes. Now, Day. that is a, an excuse-making uh, statement right there, mister. Because when you, you step out so? onto that field in, pre, in, in, in pregame, you have to be aware that for what you... I walk out on the field and you go, wow, that looks really strange. And the receiver coach should mention to them, hey, guys, just know that the field is lined this way. You remember in Hard Knocks when they sat... The, the awareness, you know, they mentioned yes. this. That's an awareness issue. I think that you're just being too kind to because the young Ryan, rookie. Ryan Poles brought it up yeah. about the lines, and then who was who was it? Was and it? by the way, in that in that that I the wide receiver coach said it was an unforgivable mistake. Yes, yes. in the the Hard Knocks episode, so not painting it or the mistake that he made. No, well, not being aware, <laughs> not the painting. Um, all right, there was the uh, quarterback strength of schedule rankings that came out as well. This is based off of Mike Sando's quarterback tiers and the quarterbacks that all 32 teams are going to face over the course of their 17 games this year. The Chicago Bears with the 31st easiest schedule, according to the quarterback tier rankings. Yeah, I mean, everything is set up and is, is fallen in line for them. Wow. It's the early schedule. 
strength of schedule. My, my first thought is there's a list for everything. There, there is, is really well, a list well, for everything. You should know that better than anybody, <laughs> Jess. With but opposing with quarterback strength of schedule, the Bears are 31st. Let me let me digest that for a second. So, so their defense is going to have a little bit easier time, is what you're telling me. Yeah. So yeah. they they face zero of what Mike Sando classifies as a tier one quarterbacks. Well, there's only three tier one quarterbacks, right? There's it was Burrow, Burrow Lamar, and um, Patrick and Patrick Mahomes, yeah. and I think Josh Allen too, right? You're right. Uh, so Lamar wasn't a no, Lamar, Lamar was wasn't a, okay. in tier one. He was in tier two. Got it. All right. So um, oh yeah. Lamar wasn't here. Is two. there a part of you that's a little disappointed in that? I mean, and what? And I don't know. They don't get to face someone good and challenge us. This is, you know, we, we just want wins. I love. I, I just. This want is wins. one of my favorite conversations of all time. <laughs> and Cap used to say it all the time. Cap will always was like, "I want to play the best and beat the best." I don't <laughs> care. I hope everyone on the Titans comes in with the flu. I hope nobody gets really, really, really sick, but I hope I all of their you. performances are affected by a stomach virus. I got you. Okay. I just want to win. The problem is going to be maybe this is Cap's theory is when, if and when they get to the playoffs and they see Mahomes on the other side, you'll be like, mm, shocked. We haven't seen this in 18 weeks. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I'm so, not worried about it. Then. Okay. We'll just, have that conversation we'll that. when we, yeah, when we get to, <laughs> is it New Orleans, right? Is it the Super Bowl in yeah, New Orleans? Yeah, I guess so. We'll have Jess, you and I have that conversation on Bourbon Street. You got it. You got it. What else, Tyler? Well, so uh, it's interesting based off of this too, because so the highest quarterback tier they face is tier two, and there are two tier two guys in their division as well. So you right. always feel like you're a little bit better against guys within your division because of familiarity with them. And especially with a guy like Jared Goff, who, you know, is not good outside. Yeah. And you're, you've had his number, but you're going to face those guys twice each. So exactly. you really are facing four tier two. Quarterbacks. Yeah, and and it, it accounts for that too, because oh, it accounts you. for the multiple games gotcha. within each tier. Yeah. Gotcha. Which I, I found that to so be the best quarterback they're going to face is Jordan Love. No, 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 no. It, uh, based or, off of the rankings, yeah. the best quarterback they face is Matthew Stafford, C.J. Stroud. They'll face Trevor Lawrence. Goff, Purdy. Lawrence is a Tier 3 guy. Uh, they have Love in Tier 2. You're right, but I mean, all of those quarterbacks could put a number on you. I mean, right. they, could, you could, they, they might be Tier 2, be a, but they're pretty darn good. Yeah, it's not like sure. you're playing Sam Darnold every week. I, I, Tommy, off that list, who's the toughest one? I mean, just off the top of your head. It was Stafford. It was, is that I, it? I would have Stafford, Stafford Stroud, okay. Goff, Stafford, Purdy, Stroud. Love, Stroud. Yeah. yeah. That crew. I am, uh, to me, again, I have all the respect in the world for the team up north because they constantly whip our ass. Right. I think one of the, I think Caleb Williams is one of the top two or three stories in his, how he will play this year mm -hmm. in all of the league. I think year two of Jordan Love is also, for me, is a football voyeur. It's top five for me. I want to see if what we saw was real. And this is and what I'm I saying before. No, I have I, no, I have no, you know, okay. preconceived thought that it wasn't real. Right, exactly. But I just want to see if he can repeat that. Same way I want to see C.J. Stroud, see what he does in year two. Yeah, I agree with all that. But I was, like I was saying with Jeff, I think that once you've – Madden used to say some version of this. Like, once you've achieved it, like, that's your baseline. And I feel like that makes sense in football. Maybe not as much in baseball. But once you achieve something, like, you're there. And now – the question is, will you keep going? But obviously, you can go backwards. It's sports. Nobody has a crystal ball. Or maybe you just level surprised. off a little. Maybe. I'd be surprised if Love or Stroud go backwards. Okay. That's, that, or, or, that would or not even level well off. for us. Or even level off. Right. You don't want... You, yeah. You What you want is you want Jordan Love's career, the highlight of his career, to be last season, if yeah. you're a Bears fan. No, for, no doubt. No doubt. But I'd be surprised if he just plays poorly. I just feel like once you've established yourself... Well, he's in good hands, you too. Know, unless you're over the hill. But or I was thinking, you know what? It's not... Cam Newton did this. He yeah. won the MVP. Yeah. Um, they lost the Super Bowl to the Broncos, and then he never reached those heights again. That's mm. a good point. He was a great fantasy player for a few years, wasn't he? Prior that to that, year? that MVP. No, no, he was good prior to that season. That MVP season was phenomenal, and then he never was quite there. Not even really close. Okay, you're right about that. There's so many other cases. You know, Tom Brady reached the pinnacle, and he stayed there. You know, guys that are good usually stay there or get better. Usually. Well, I mean, Lamar had, what, an MVP season in his second year and then with injuries and other things, took a bit of a dip and then found his way again and was the MVP of the league last year. Yeah, I would say the dip was not so much him. And, Ma like, dude, you know, injuries and the other things you mentioned. But that is him. Matt Ryan won the MVP, went to the Super Bowl, 
then never went back again. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying you have to go back every. I'm just saying, but Matt Ryan but you was don't really take good. a huge step back. Is yeah, what Matt you're Ryan was really good. But you also sometimes hit, you plateau, you hit these levels, and then you never reach them again. There, there's there's career years that exist. You know, I mean, maybe we just saw it with Brock Purdy. You think Brock Purdy's going to do exactly what he did last year? That's another Carson oh, story for me. Carson Wentz and I used one. to go back and forth about Purdy last year. Yeah, I, I mean, and at I was, the end of the I day, was the guy put Purdy on the Bears and put Justin Fields on the Niners. I did that whole thing a million times. Yeah, I think the 49ers are happy with right. their <laughs> end of that deal right now. No doubt. I don't know who I don't know who Brock Purdy's going to be going forward either. I don't. Okay, I'm not sure. You got a lot of question marks. I do. That's you, really you know, do. yeah. I got several about the upcoming season that I'm thrilled to sit back and watch unfold. I guess I'm just saying, like a guy like Jordan Love, I I think he's just a really good starting quarterback, and that's what he's going to be. Like he established himself. But maybe you guys are right. Maybe there's well, but you Jordan know. Love. If you look at it closely, Jordan Love's run was basically the last eight games, eight games of the regular yeah, season, yeah. and then he played really well. It was an extension well, of also his, the Bears yeah. game. Yes. That's true. That was game one. That was game one. Yeah. yeah. But look, I, I'm That's my right. expectation is is he's going to be a right. good football yeah, player. Yeah. It's not that he's going to take this enormous dip, but I think it is like people, you know, just you would people adjust to what they've seen. Yeah. Now no, you've no, got to right. adjust to the adjustment. 100 percent Right. Maybe I'm making it sound too easy. Tyler, what you have anything else? Uh let's do some... baseball. No. No, oh, no. Okay. Jesse, Jesse. <laughs> Uh, we'll have some interesting lines in Like It, Love It. We don't have any NFL games to I was going to say, I don't have any picks yet, for you. But I've got some bets I want to throw your way. Okay, let's do and it. I want to hear all of your thoughts.